Each year, the James Beard Foundation honors excellence in the culinary industry. You can feel the energy here. It just feels wonderful. The weekend starts with the Media Awards, celebrating the authors and content creators leaving their mark on the food world. This was on my vision board for like five years from now, so. The Leadership Awards follow, spotlighting the complex realms of sustainability, food justice, and public health. Leadership is not a solo flight around the world. In fact, leaders lead with their communities. There are panels and roundtables. We are important, we matter, our, our businesses matter. Networking, and of course, plenty of delicious food from around the country. All of this culminates in the Restaurant and Chef Awards, held at the Lyric Opera House in downtown Chicago. Find out what a coveted James Beard Award means for a career and a community as we celebrate those pushing the industry forward. Welcome, everyone, to the 2022 James Beard Awards. Please welcome your host, Kwame Onwachi. What's up, y'all? What's going on? No, no, no. Yo, we are back. We're back together for the first time in two years. Y'all are beautiful. Tonight's theme is Gather for Good. As we've come together for the first time in a long time to celebrate those of us who are making big moves in our communities and in our kitchens. A lot of incredible people and restaurants are up for awards tonight. And listen, I think the achievements y'all have made are doubly impressive since restaurants essentially stopped being a thing for like almost a year, right? So on top of awards like Best Chef and Outstanding Hospitality, we should have new awards that accurately reflect the hardships that we had to go through. Awards like how many times you said the word new normal to your staff. <laughs> and an award for crying in the walk-in goes to... <laughs> Are y'all ready to have a good time? No, 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 no. I said, are y'all ready to have a good time? The James Beard Awards are one of those once-in-a-lifetime moments that a cook, a chef, can feel like they can work towards. To receive an award from, from this hallowed organization, I think, is the ultimate kind of treasure and gift. It is a big deal. Careers are made from these awards not only career changing, but it's life defining. The first award of the evening, please welcome Kimberly Mills from San Pellegrino. Emerging chef, which used to be called Rising Star Chef of the Year. The committee changed the name because I think we all felt like, listen, you can have a second act in your life and you don't have to be under 30 to do that. You are literally the rising star, the emerging chef that everybody is going to have their eyes on for the next year. What are you going to do with it? Without further ado, the nominees for emerging chef are Angel Barreto, Anjou, Calvin Eng, Bonnies, Cleophus Heffington, Benet on Eagle, Shireen Mabey, Dakar Noma. Edgar Rico, Mixta Taqueria, Crystal Wapapa, Wapapa's Kitchen. And the award goes to Edgar Rico. Me and my fiance, we opened up this restaurant on a shoestring budget of $75,000. We almost went broke opening this restaurant, but to be here amongst all y'all tonight, this is huge. This is huge for La Raza. This is huge for my people. For all the taqueros out there in the world, anything is possible. Thank you to my fiance, who is my partner in this restaurant. My parents, who are immigrants that immigrated to this country to come here. Thank you. It is five in the morning here in Austin, Tejas. 
We are on our way right now to start grinding to make the foundation for what Nix is all about, tortillas. It's not an easy process. Not a lot of people want to spend 20 hours a day making tortillas just so they can have a, a taco, you know? Is it worth it? Is it worth waking up painstakingly early in the morning to make this happen? Absolutely. Like, you taste it. There's love behind that. There's soul behind that. We source all our corn from various parts of Mexico but we also gather ingredients from some of the best farmers in America. Why is it important to you to buy from local farms? There's a story behind it. You know, there's that relationship that you have with someone like y'all that really give that extra TLC and love to, you know, what you guys grow. Just like what we do with tortillas and like, you know, take that laborious process to you know, make a tortilla. I think you guys show that same respect to vegetables and how you guys grow. Nixta is an extension of my own home. Like, you're gonna feel welcome, you're gonna feel warm, and you're gonna bite into the most amazing taco you've ever had in your life. Me, my partner Sarah, and some friends, we literally put all this together. Like, I grouted these walls, painted this paint on here. Like, all of this was through our blood, sweat, and tears. To have won this title of Emerging Chef really, really meant a lot to me because I never thought, like, I would be a chef of that caliber. So I got choked up because, you know, seeing my parents work the jobs that, you know, people wouldn't want to work just so I can be able to live out my dreams and to have looked out on the crowd and seen them there, like, that was huge. We are shaping this evolution of what Mexican food is all about. And to be a part of that forefront, part of that movement right now of chefs that are really just, you know, taking what we know and what we grew up by and just breaking all the rules of what Mexican food is and what it can be, sky's the limit, man. I'm gonna change my outfit. I need to go freshen up. I'll see you guys later. The 2022 James Beard Awards broadcast on CBS is sponsored by Capital One, What's in Your Wallet? And by Rocket Mortgage. When you need a home loan that works for you, Rocket can. James Beard is the preeminent 20th century really inventor of American cuisine. He was a cooking teacher. He was one of the first big food television personalities, and he was a great author. He, along with Julia Child and others, really set the standard for taking American food seriously. The James Beard Foundation started off with James Beard the man, and then the building of the foundation that enshrined all that he represented and his legacy. And then more recently, it's really been about centering all that we do in our mission, bringing the pleasure and the purpose together in good food for good. James Beard Award Weekend in the American culinary world is just the biggest party ever. It is the media awards one day where we celebrate journalists, broadcasters, filmmakers. It has been a pleasure to hear all of the stories that people entrust me with. Then there's the leadership awards that really highlight people who are really doing good in our community. There cannot be a food movement in this country if there is no justice for food workers. It's like the Oscars of the food world. They recognize so many different chefs, from emerging chefs to American classics, to Lifetime Achievement Awards, to the best chefs in every single region. This year in particular is really special because our country is so divided right now. And I think that most people would agree that food is just such a cultural unifier. It brings people together. After a two-year hiatus, there has never been a more inclusive, diverse group of nominees, winners, and I think most importantly, a brand new system by which we are recognizing those who are doing great things in American food. There is all this incredible stuff that happens 
in every, every pocket around the United States of America. And the regional awards really help us to appreciate our country more and all the amazing things that represent hospitality in the United States of America. Mm. It's going to be a rock and roll because I'm going to be a part of it. To kick off our regional Best Chef Awards presented by Capital One, one of the best chefs in the world, all right, Dominique Kren, along with Chef Tanya Holland. I've been like, yeah, dance. Okay. Come on, guys. Yes! Yes! Did it. Woo! <laughs> and the winner is, show me the card, Brandon <laughs> Jill! I'm excited about the evolution of Chinese American food, and I'm honored to be representing our version in San Francisco Chinatown. Fernando Olea! And this is a dream come true. Thank you, all of you. So I guess like many, I didn't expect to win an award tonight, but you have to expect the unexpected. The winner is Caroline Glover. Restaurants aren't a luxury. We're essential, and it's time for us to start being treated that way. Robin Maiki. Just well. <laughs> so overwhelmed. Ileana de la Vega. Thank you. Cristina Martinez. Para mí es un honor estar aquí representando a Filadelfia, a México. Como mexicana y como emigrante. And the winner is Chintan Tan Taya. Just gonna do one more stupid and idiot thing. I just want to take a selfie with everybody in behind. It's never happened. My mom is here, y'all. I'm coming to you. All right. So, will you help me present the, the awards? And the winner is Adam Evans. Ricky Moore. Yo, I didn't know this was gonna happen. Nisha Chong Morgan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Winner is Eric Williams, Virtue Restaurant and Bar. I didn't get here of myself or by myself. I got here by way of my community. Capital One salutes the chefs advocating for their communities. You sit in the chair, you exchange, you begin a whole community in the room and it develops sort of organically. It's a space of reclaiming yourself, your community, everything. Our nation's greatest chefs connect people over shared plates and common ground. The moment food and beverage gets involved, then there's an opportunity there for us to move forward, for us to kind of press reset, for us to advance. We can't change the world at once, but we can change the way we behave where we are. Here at Capital One, we know community is homegrown, carefully cultivated, and nurtured by those who hold it close. This gives you life. You want to make food with these ingredients because they're beautiful. Congratulations to all of this year's nominees and winners. Thank you for creating a space at the table for us all. The next honor is a special one because it recognizes the person who has distinguished themselves not just for a season or at a particular venue, but over a long career in our industry. You know, I met this year's honoree, Martin Yan, during a Top Chef Challenge when I had to cook at his restaurant in LA. And Chef Yan told us to harness the power of the sun. I don't know what he was talking about, but <laughs> I'm still proud to be able to say I cook for him. I'm the culinary ambassador Food is the bridge for all of us, and I want to use food and cooking to bring people closer together. I was born in Guangzhou, China. It was the most turbulent time in modern Chinese history. There's a famine, drought, flood, and a lot of problems. As a kid, we went to bed hungry. So we learned 
not to waste anything. Whatever you have, you have to create something. Hello, hello, hello. 好世界，好世界。I actually went to culinary school, and then when I graduate, so my first stop is in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It just happened that year. It was the coldest in 40 years. I came down to visit a friend. Went to UC Davis. Never returned to Canada. This is too cold. I actually start teaching cooking class when I was at UC Davis. This is how I begin to figure out. Hey, this is kind of fun. That I make good money and I make everybody happy. One day, somebody frantically calls, say, "I'm the producer. Can you come over to the studio tomorrow to do a cooking demonstration?" And I said, "Are you sure? But I never faced a camera before. I don't know how to do television." The general manager actually watched it and said. Ask this guy. This guy is crazy. Ask him to come back. He asked me, "Hey, Chef Yan, how would you like to host your own show?" That was 43 years ago. I feel like I met Martin when I was three years old, because he was always in my living room. I remember watching as a kid and thinking, "Okay, here's a guy who looks like he could be my uncle. He could be my dad. He's doing something that he loves and that comes from the heart." And I thought to myself, "I would love to model that after my own life one day." So even as a young kid, I remember, "If Yan can do it, I can do it too." And it's not just with his cooking. Producing Martin shows was fascinating for me because he has this exuberance, and he also has this depth of knowledge. Not everyone can ad lib as easily as he can. Not everyone can explain things without stopping to think about them. I'm tired. This is hard work. Everything looks easy in life, but when you actually get involved, it is sweat and blood and hard work. I admire these people. I think the most impressive characteristic of Martin is how hard he works. Not just doing the television production, but how hard he works all the time for everything he's interested in. I have I publish about close to 35 cookbooks, and I'm working on one more. All together, at one point, I have 12 restaurants. I've done probably about a total of 32 series. And to my next show with Martin Yan, come be. Bye bye. Bye bye. The reason why I do the show with the travel log is I want people to understand where I came from and where I'm going. It has been the most challenging, fulfilling, and comforting journey—a life journey as well as a culinary journey. When you have something as simple as a common denominator of food, and you understand how it's put together, and then you appreciate it by eating it, you are essentially welcoming someone who is different, a culture that's different, into your everyday. And I think that's exceptionally powerful. It's not just the food; it's what he's done for people. It's what he's done for his community. It's the support he's given to other chefs and other people. For all these reasons, his lifetime and his body of work really merit the award he's getting. People from around the world come over to the U.S. to look for the American dream, and this is one of the American dream that we have fulfilled. My Chinatown, your Chinatown, everybody's Chinatown. Everyone, Chef Martin Yan. The Jane Beard Foundation is unique in that it recognizes not only the excellency in culinary arts, but also its connection and contribution to our community, to this great country, U.S. of A. Perhaps the most important lesson I have learned is that I am not only a chef with a public persona. But like my mentor, Julia Child, I have the opportunity to bring people together through my television work and personal appearances. And like Julia, I want to inspire others to share the joy of cooking.
That's why I am ready to work. So from the bottom of my heart, the hardworking, all the world with the chef professionals around the world who devote their entire life to this particular profession, this one is for you. That's for you. That's for you. Best Made has always championed a better way of doing things. And we salute chefs doing the same. As chefs, we have a unique platform already where people are very interested in what we do and, and uh, are already kind of listening to what we say on a regular basis. They're pushing the boundaries with creative, thoughtfully sourced dishes. Being a Choctaw person and being able to tell the story of the food and the land is really important to me. And building communities meant to last and inspire. We're an incredibly powerful bunch of people. We do have an impactful voice when it comes to elevating our communities, our individual communities around the country and around the world. Congratulations to all of this year's nominees. Thank you for your commitment to doing things better and making all of us better in the process. Later today, we head out to Los Angeles, where it's time to get serious at one of America's most popular rising sports. The Skechers Summer Pickleball Championships is coming up today at 4 Eastern here on CBS. And now it is my great privilege to present the Humanitarian of the Year Award. This year's Humanitarian of the Year is a person for whom I have tremendous both personal and professional admiration. Known as the accidental voice of Chinatown and the poet laureate of the walk, Grace Young is a cookbook author, culinary historian, and filmmaker. She rose to the defense of New York City's Chinatown, in fact, all Chinatowns, their restaurants, residents, and culture, as COVID-19 and the ongoing wave of AAPI hate swept the country. But don't let her laid back manner and easy smile fool you. She is a warrior for justice in her community. I really feel that San Francisco and New York's Chinatowns are as important in telling the story of this country as the Liberty Bell. I'm Grace Young. I'm known as the Stir Fry Guru. I'm a self-described walk therapist. And since the pandemic, there are many people who call me the accidental voice for Chinatown. In January of 2020, everything was normal, and then it suddenly wasn't. The pandemic shifted my focus from being interested in recording old recipes and walk traditions to realizing that I needed to preserve and protect Chinatown. Grace and I met on the phone in March of 2020. She was originally scheduled to do some programming for an exhibition we had just mounted about 100 years of Chinese posters, but the city was completely shut down. So I contacted her to ask, what could we do? I said to her, I've been thinking about going down to Chinatown and interviewing restaurant and shop owners and doing posts on my Instagram. And she said, if you do this, we will post the videos on Poster House's website. That's why the videographer Dan Ahn and I ended up in Chinatown 48 hours later shooting these interviews. And we did not know that a few hours later, de Blasio was going to put New York City under lockdown. In the days to come, I hope to share videos with you so that you can hear the stories of what some of these owners are going through. Those videos have become such an important oral history for one of Chinatown's darkest days. Grace is an incredibly talented, fierce, loving, and passionate person. Passion spreads. Enthusiasm is a strategy. And you see that that makes ripples and impacts and starts to build a community. 
During 2020, my family shut down three shops. Aside from all these video campaigns and shopping campaigns that she did, she also pulled in her connections and her friends to highlight my family's business. I've never experienced that kind of kindness before. Grace in the beginning was just chronicling the daily hardships of Chinatown. And then she paired up with the Beard House and the poster has to work on several campaigns, one being hashtag save Chinese restaurants and the second being hashtag love AAPI. As if that wasn't enough, she paired up all these struggling restaurants with people who were food insecure in Chinatown and raised $40,000 to make sure they got fed and the restaurants got paid. Grace is so humble. She, of course she's going to call herself the accidental voice of Chinatown. There was nothing accidental about it. She just cares so passionately. She leads through a softness by building those like personal connections with different stores and like getting to know their story. She is a power to be reckoned with. I would say that my life's work came into focus during the pandemic. And as the pandemic unfolded, and I saw that Chinatown was spiraling out of control, I found my voice. I realized that I was the go-to person that could connect things and make things happen. And I am very lucky. The James Beard Foundation giving this award is very, very important because it shows me that they are supporting Chinatowns and the AAPI community. And after what it's been through in the last two years, that is so powerful and I am eternally grateful. Amazing. Uh, would you please join me in welcoming to the stage Humanitarian of the Year, Grace Young. Oh my God. I just met Dominique Crenn today. And she just asked me if she could escort me out here. Dominique Crenn. Um, my heartfelt thanks to the James Beard Foundation for this incredible honor. At the start of the pandemic, if you had told me that I was going to become a Chinatown activist, and that two and a half years later, I would receive the James Beard Humanitarian Award, I would have asked, what are you smoking? <laughs> but I also would never have dreamt that Chinatown's very existence would come under threat. People ask me all the time what they can do to help, and it's so simple. Just show up. Go to your local Chinatown, spend money in the restaurants, markets, bakeries, shops. They need our support more than ever. Receiving the Humanitarian Award is a great personal honor, and I would like to thank the James Beard Foundation so much and to dedicate this award to Chinatowns everywhere. Thank you. This is a toast to the dreamers, the crack of dawn risers, and the late night closers. The people who put in the long hours needed to create that special moment for their guests. Our communities are powered by the countless individuals tirelessly pursuing their dreams. They inspire us with their vision and delight us with all they've accomplished. Rocket Mortgage is proud to sponsor the James Beard Awards and thanks all of the restaurants who are helping build the vibrant, resilient, and inclusive communities we call home.
Bento Box salutes the 2022 James Beard nominees and winners. If you're working in restaurants these days, you are a survivor. This is so much bigger than us. Awami is more like a community spirit than anything else. We're putting health on the table, we're putting culture on the table, and we're putting our stories on the table. Thank you for making this world more equitable and delicious for us all. Please welcome James Beard Award winners, Kevin Bame and Donnie Medea. For those of you that don't know Kevin and I, we in our restaurant groups were nominated for this award for years, and we have both had the chance to win it. But tonight is different. Tonight, we get a chance to present the award together. So the nominees for Outstanding Restaurant Tour are... Ishaq Bajaj, Chris Bianco, Kevin Gillespie, Akapong Earl Minsan, Chris Williams, Ellen Yin, and the winner is Chris Bianco. Woo! I was so moved by all the stories. It's crazy. It's uh... it's it's a, it's a lot. I mean. I'm not talking about what, what I did. I'm a kid, I started pizzeria in 1988. You know, I don't know what I was doing then, I don't know what I'm doing now. But what I do know is um, I'm grateful. There's so many of my friends that didn't get through the last two years. Physically, spiritually, or well, the business is shut down. And, and I think I don't want to forget those people as, as we celebrate, you know? What I've been given tonight is just a responsibility. It's not something that separates me from you, but it's an opportunity to connect us all. Your stories humble me, and um, peace. Congratulations. Congratulations, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Feel good? You deserve it. You deserve it. Outstanding Restaurant recognizes a restaurant across the whole country that has shown consistency over the years, both in terms of the cuisine and the craft, but also in terms of the community spirit and their alignment with the Beard Foundation's values. Outstanding Restaurant um, should be a restaurant which makes the customers feel special transports them to a different place, not only in terms of ambiance, but in terms of service and, of course, the food. First of all, the word restaurant means to restore your spirit and community, right? So a restaurant that wins that is not only incredible in terms of all the touch points, like service, food, true hospitality, but it might also be how do they engage in your community? I won't keep you any longer, and in suspense, let's do it. The nominees for Outstanding Restaurant are... Brennan's, Butcher and Bee, Chai Pani, Parachute, The Walrus and the Carpenter. And the winner is Chai Pani. We were three months shy of our 40th birthday, Molly and I, when we opened a little Indian street food restaurant in Asheville, North Carolina. <laughs> but the only guiding principle that we had was an Indian spiritual quote, mastery and servitude. And this idea that if every day, every act you do is an act of service, that you can not only transform yourself, but transform the community, society around you, and maybe even the world. And it's been the greatest privilege of my life to have a team that I found that I work with every day that embrace that philosophy. Most of cooking is just a constant reminder, you, you, no matter how much you want to rush it, you just can't rush it. That's the heart and soul of cooking, is learning to be patient, letting things come naturally the way they're supposed to come. 
took me a while to wrap my head around what winning this award meant. It's outstanding restaurant, which just seems so crazy to visualize what that can be. I wanted to create a restaurant that was really immersive. I want you to feel like you're standing on a busy market corner with millions of people around you and you elbow to elbow jostling with somebody for your little samosa or some street food vendor. Thank you. Are you happy? Yeah. Yeah. Did you try everything? Yeah. Did you try everything you wanted to try so far? Yeah. 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 I believe restaurants are the way that we, humanity, finds each other again. It's not just the quality of the food, which should be awesome, but it's also the environment that somebody's craving when they come into that restaurant. It's about celebrating life and togetherness and everybody having a seat at the table. Chaipani's food and Indian street food feels democratic. It transcends communities, religions, ethnicities, and all these boundaries that have been created because the street food vendors created cuisines and types of food that worked for everybody. When we heard them call our names in the auditorium, we sort of fell into each other and heaved some really big, deep sobs. And those sobs were just absolute, utter astonishment. It felt like a, a time of real change in our industry where restaurants like ours could even qualify for this category. I felt the earth sort of moving underneath us. Mastery and servitude is a spiritual quote, and it's the idea that if you truly look at every act you do as an act of service, you will master yourself as a human being. Are we doing enough as a business in the community to make the community a better place because we exist? A and every day, that's the challenge. You wake up in the morning and the world can seem a really overwhelming place, but if you can tackle it one tiny gesture at a time, changes everything. Restaurants are so much greater than the sum of what's inside the four walls. And as I look around and see so many like-minded people, I just imagine the collective power of this industry to transform society and to transform the world. Thank you and namaste. Thank you. One more. One more outfit change, is that all right? Y'all don't have anywhere to be? American Airlines is helping you travel to a world waiting to inspire you and keeping you well-fed while doing it. Our flagship lounges and flagship first dining pair James Beard award-winning chefs with American Airlines' outstanding hospitality. Thoughtfully prepared menus one-of-a-kind dishes, and plenty of star power guarantee that the journey will be just as memorable as the destination. Cheers to the 2022 James Beard nominees and all they do to elevate our cuisine, whether at 35,000 feet or just around the corner. Coming up next, we showcase some trailblazing diverse athletes on Beyond Limits, name, image, and likeness right here on CBS. The 2022 James Beard Awards broadcast on CBS is sponsored by Capital One, What's in Your Wallet, American Airlines, proud partner of the James Beard Foundation and sponsor of the James Beard Awards, and by Bento Box, the marketing and commerce platform for modern restaurants. Outstanding Chef is identifying the person who really is the creme de la creme, who has shown consistent leadership uh, and excellence over the years and continues to be a role model for the rest of the industry. Each chef who wins Outstanding Chef is recognized not just for what they've built on hundreds of thousands of plates that have gone out over their pass at their restaurant or restaurants, but for what they've done to change our industry. It's, it's a award that is as prestigious as it gets. 
to this year's winner of Outstanding Chef, my advice would be enjoy it, breathe deep, and then look forward to getting back to work because it is a tremendous honor, but also a huge responsibility. It's something that will, will drive you to continue to be a part of connecting with your community as a whole. Here are the nominees for Outstanding Chef. Reem Asil, Reems. Mashama Bailey, The Gray. Peter Chang, Peter Chang. Jason Vincent, Giant. Rachel Yang and Safe Shurchi, Ju. And the winner of Outstanding Chef, Mashama Bailey, the Gray. I can just about talk myself out of anything. For the past few days, I've been talking myself out of the remote possibility of my name being called and me coming up on this stage and accepting this award. All this excitement. Um, <laughs> From my ancestors, to my parents, to my mentors, to my business partner, to my chefs, and to all the staff at the restaurants, I thank you. Thank you for supporting me, and, the, and thank you for betting on black. My style of cooking is very nostalgic. I need to feel confident that I'm connecting with the ingredients. Hey, One of the things that I've noticed about my coming up in this industry was that there weren't many black faces that I could look to for inspiration or mentorship or guidance. And so very early on, I found this woman through her cookbooks named Edna Lewis. In the beginning of the conception of the gray, we had sort of like this almost European format when it came to our menuing. And being inspired by one of Edna's cookbooks, I wanted to break it up into where the food was coming from. Our menu is broken up into four sections, water, dirt, pasture, and pantry. And for me, those are the four major elements of the South. My evolution of a chef has helped me really pull from that six-year-old girl that was living here would get excited about going to the country to see her grandmother and eat peaches off the tree or figs from the backyard or drink sun tea on the porch. See you soon. All right. Okay. That night during the James Beard Awards and they called my name for Outstanding Chef, I felt almost at peace in this weird way. Like I felt I had achieved this accomplishment that I didn't even know that I wanted until they put my name on the list. All of the imposter syndrome and all of the anxiety and wondering if I belonged in the room, all those things went away. Every time I talk about it, I, I get emotional because, you know, I represent so many people who have cooked in spaces like this that haven't been recognized and I broke through. And so now that the door is open, anyone can break through. Hopefully this win could start to create a network of minority farmers and purveyors and chefs that really help to fill that missing void in this industry. You're gonna be hearing more about what black folks are doing in food in America. And I'm just one of the first ones right now through the gate, but there's a whole army behind me.
Black and brown folks, immigrants, mom and pop shops have been bubbling underneath the surface of this industry, working hard for a long time, establishing our place in American food. I stand on the backs of many of them. And today, a little black girl or a little black boy can see themselves as a future outstanding chef. They can see themselves in a space that they have never seen before and do what they could not think is possible. And until just a few minutes ago, that was me. So thank you. Yo, we did it, y'all. We did it. We celebrated our finest and we gathered for good. This has been the 2022 James Beard Awards. I'm Kwame Nwachi, peace. Did it. Did it. Did it.